Good morning, church. Amen. God is in good indeed. He's faithful indeed. I'm not going to lead another time of worship. I'm going to be here just to uh, share the word. Shall we rise and uh, let's turn to, to John 14. We're reading John 14, chapter 1, verse 1 to 14, and then we go on to read 23 to 27. On the count of three, one, two, three. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going? Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it's the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe in the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than this, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All these I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Please be seated. As you are sitting down, please turn to your neighbor and say, Peace be with you. Amen. Well, as many of you know by now that Pastor Alex is my brother. He is my uh, one and only brother. He is my real brother. And uh, let me just share with you a tale of the Tan brothers as we were growing up. Uh, so you'll see these this, uh, two photos here. Uh, that's my, my parents and my, 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 my two siblings. One of them has gone home, gone home to be with the Lord. Uh, can you guess in the family photo, which is, let me just get this right, yeah, which is Alex and which is me, right here. Talk, t tell a neighbor. Who has the naughtiest look? Who says that this is me? Okay, this is Alex. Okay, that, this, this guy here is me. This skinny guy here is Alex. So as you see that, we, as we grow up, I am the, the chubbier one, and Alex is the slimmer one. And uh, one evening, uh, around this age, probably about eight or nine, I was, I was uh, probably, sorry, I was about 10 and Alex was about seven. So we, all, we are three years apart. And we were making our way for dinner uh, and uh, family were walking to the restaurant. This is back in Klang. And we came to a wide open space. So me and Alex were right, right in front. My parents and my youngest brother were behind. And as we came to a wide open space, now parents, those of you who have kids, especially boys, when, uh, when boys at 10 and 7 see wide open spaces, what comes to their mind? They run. <laughs> they want to run. So I turn to Alex and say to him, why don't we run and race and see who reaches the end first? And if you reach the end first, we are the... 
So we, we can't, we're going to be the winner. So we got ready, we got set, and I counted one, two, three. I ran on, on, on the third count. And, and as I ran, I was in the big lead. I was way ahead of my brother. And I thought, this is going to be a piece of cake. I'm going to just uh, win. I'm going to have a good old time dinner. Just push this, uh, making feel bad that I ran faster than you. But two tips along the way, I began to slow down, being the chubbier one. He being the taller, not, not taller, he, he being the, he has longer legs, slender legs, he's lighter as well. So as, as, I, as, we, as I was reaching the finishing line, I was like slowing down, seriously slowing down. And he was pulling right beside me. So I don't want to go to dinner and he telling me, Coco, I beat you at running. I'm faster than you. That would be so shameful. So this is what I did. As he came beside me, I instinctively did this. <laughs> and I was first, I was number one. So I want to turn around, turn back to him and say, ha, who, look who won. But he was not there. I couldn't find him at all. He was nowhere behind me. And I, suddenly I heard a cry. So I ran to, the, to where the cry was. I looked down. He was right in the ditch. <laughs> oh, and uh, I still remember this very vividly today. As he turned around, he was face down in the drain. As he turned around, there was blood gushing out from his forehead. And he had five stitches because I pushed him, and I cheated. So this was uh, this is a tale of me and my brother, sibling rivalry from then. Uh, but when I saw him. Then in the, in the drain, I was very troubled. I was very, very um, concerned at his well-being. He had five stitches. So if you look at him today, he has a very sexy scar on his forehead. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but going back to, to my point, uh, I was very troubled at the time, seeing how he was, uh, how he was uh, at, a, at a boy about 10, seeing him, a big scar here, um, just crying out in pain. I was... Trouble. Now, the word trouble is what I want to draw your attention to. In John chapter 1, Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, this is the first words of Jesus in John 14. Now, why would he say, Do not let your hearts be troubled? So, if you go back to John 13, John 13, Jesus was with the disciples. And this is where he was telling them, one of you within the 12 will betray me. And he told Peter specifically, you're going to deny me three times. And this caused a lot of tension and friction within the, the community of 12. They were not sure what's going to happen to this community. Because if the master, Jesus, would say that Peter would deny me three times, definitely there's, there's going to be a concern for, as well as concern about what's to come, uh, Will there be persecution? Will there be difficulty along the way? And I want to just uh, draw your attention to as well to, 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 you, to you yourself. Turn to your neighbor and just ask, are you feeling troubled right now? In a compassionate look and gaze. Jesus was concerned for the welfare of the disciples. He knew the hearts of the disciples were troubled. Likewise, you also know right now that your hearts may be troubled. And this is what he says to the disciples. Believe in God and believe in me, meaning Christ. Now, why do you say believe in God and believe in Christ? The Jews at that time had a... They, they automatically, when they grew up, they were believe in God. They believe in the I am God, the Jehovah God. We have been going through this series about I am, where Christ uh, states, this is who I am. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. And today we're going through I am the way, the truth, and the life. But they have, while they know a lot about God, I am here, but in times of difficulty and trouble, when the rubber hits the road, they had difficulty believing in the I am God. And he says today as well, don't just believe in the I am God, but believe in Christ. 
And later you're going to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he's trying to make it personal to the disciples, and likewise to you as well even this morning, that Jesus is the I am God to you. This is not a great, big, sovereign being that is so supernatural, that's so powerful, but it's also very, very personal to you even this morning, that I am indeed the God who is very concerned about you. Amen. Amen. Now, as followers of Christ, now I've been a believer, uh, I grew up in a Christian family, and, and I know a lot about God, a lot about Jesus. Sometimes it's all here and not here. And some of us may have been Christians for a long time. And you know, maybe your faith and your journey now is a little bit stale. You've been wondering, God, I want, I want to encounter you, even personally, even this today. I've been, you've been crying out for a long time. But just like the disciples, they've been with Jesus for three years. But when trouble came their way, they were, dis- they were in despair. They were troubled as well. So it's okay to be troubled. But Jesus tells you that I want to be real to you even this morning. So we go on now to uh, the first point. And the doubt. Now after Jesus shared the disciples that uh, he would go away and prepare a room, prepare many rooms and would come and bring you back to where he was, uh, Thomas asked this question to him and said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? How can we know the way? This was just after Jesus telling Thomas, do not let your hearts be troubled. But Thomas was still troubled, obviously, by his reply here, his question here. Lord, we do not know where you are going. There's some, some, some concern in his, in his voice. Uh, so how do we know the way? And when there is uncertainty in life, doubt always follows. It is a, a common reaction because as, as, as men and women, human beings, uh, to, to, do, to believe without evidence is quite challenging. We want to see, uh, we want to see evidence in place to answer our questions so that we can actually believe what is happening. So Thomas, you know Thomas, the, the famous story, Doubting Thomas, when Christ rose again and resurrected, he met the disciples, and, he, and Thomas came, wasn't there, but Thomas asked and, and saw Jesus. He asked Jesus, uh, show me, show me your, what? Show me your scars and your wounds, then only I will believe that you are the reason Lord, he asked for evidence. We also ask for evidence. We have difficulty understanding things that don't go our way. Now, Yuki and I just came back from, from Japan. My wife is, is from Japan, and we, we make a trip home once a year to visit her, her mom and dad. And uh, we thank God that they're still healthy. And what, this, this particular trip, we made, a, made an effort to visit a church. Uh, this church was uh, planted and founded by two of our friends that we know from America, and this is in Osaka. And we went to this church because our dear friend, the pastor, died suddenly on September 30th. And this caused a lot of uncertainty among this church that was thriving uh, for seven years already in, in, in existence, from a church of 20 to a church now of about almost 200 now, 200 in size in Japan is a very, very big church. And when, when we were there, we did not know what to expect because there was the first time that they were having service, uh, not the first time actually, it's been a few weekends already, but there was the first time that we were there seeing the church, not knowing what would happen because the pastor is not around anymore. So when we went there, when we stepped into the, the sanctuary, there was a evident, tangible presence of God in church. Uh, people, the entire church, they were worshipping the Lord. They were believing in God in faith for the future of the church. Uh, we talked to the wife of our, the pastor who passed away. She told Yuki and I, Gilbert and Yuki, it's, it's been tough. Um, I do not know what will happen, but I believe God is still in control. 
I believe as a church, God has a special plan for this church. It is not dependent on my husband. Amen? So the church in DUMC, God has a plan for DUMC, and it's not solely dependent on us pastors, but God used us to bring the church ahead. But it's still God is in control, regardless of whatever circumstance that we are going through. And, and she told me, and I, I was so encouraged, whatever the future holds, I do not know. It's challenging because I am now a, a widow, a single mom of three kids. I do not know what will happen. I'm living in a land that is foreign to me. But I will still trust the Lord. Uh, I will still believe in Him. So once again, going back to Thomas. Thomas doubted. He wanted evidence to, to feel comforted, to feel that he is ready to search forward with confidence. But sometimes there will not be evidence that will, will come our way and to assure us. We just have to, to believe. I can identify with Thomas. I, I doubt as well sometimes about why am I in this situation? Why am I placed in this hardship? Why am I placed in this situation at work that is troubling? Maybe in your marriage, you have doubts about your marriage. And perhaps even you doubt about your ability to keep the faith in following God faithfully. Perhaps some of us here seriously has questions. Can I really follow Christ? I have this lingering question, this, this gnawing thought in my mind that this walk is too tough. It's a legitimate question that you may ask as well. But let me just um, tell you what happens to Thomas. Now, when Thomas met Jesus, after showing, Jesus showing his arms, his wounds on his, on his hands, Thomas, his response was amazing. He knelt down and he said, Oh Lord, my Lord. He finally saw a revelation of Christ. He encountered the love of Christ. Then, then when he met Christ, when he, his eyes were open. Friends, when you have doubt, this is where the Lord can come to you and speak to you and reveal himself to you, in, to you even very, very personally. Think about it, friends. Let your doubts be the catalyst for a new revelation of Christ in your circumstance even right now. He wants to reveal himself every day a new perspective of who Christ is. That is such an amazing thought. Amen? And then, if Thomas did not ask this question, Lord, we don't know where you are going so how can we know the way? We will never have one of the greatest answers from Christ. Where he, re he replied, the answer, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now this is a powerful statement. If Thomas never asked the question about the concerns that he have to Jesus, Perhaps this would not have been made known to us today. So your doubts can bring about questions, answers to your questions, not only for you, but for many, many people that you can share through your testimony, through your personal life. Your story, your doubts can be a story that is very, very powerful. Amen? So going to point number two, this was the answer that Jesus gave to Thomas. I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except only through me. The whole posture that Jesus took in John 14 was one of an encouragement posture. He was here to encourage. He was here to bring comfort, to bring hope to the disciples. So as he, he was talking to the disciples, he was not meant to just to, to reprimand or to teach or to instruct. He was there to encourage. He was there to, to give hope to the disciples when he was giving this, uh, this 
saying about this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now let's unpack these three statements, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, individually. We look, so we look at now, I am the way, I am the way. Now Jesus does not say to you and I that I will show you the way. I will tell you how to get there. Now, the UMC has a very good culture, which I really like. When there's new people or guests coming to the UMC, particularly in DC for the first time, and they ask, where is the toilet? Where is the office? How do I get to Hall 1? How do I get to Next Gen Space? What do you do? Uh? What would you do? Would you tell them, ah, Hall 1 is upstairs. You go straight to the end, take the steps up, turn right, ah, Hall 1 is there. Uh, it's, it's, it sounds very, I mean, I know the directions, but to, to a newcomer, it can be quite confusing. So what would you do in UMC Church? You will bring them there, right? That's a good, good culture you want to inculcate in UMC. So as well, not only in church, but as well as wherever you are, you will go all out of the way to assist people, to help people. What Jesus is saying here is not only about our testimony for him. He's talking to you and I personally, asking, asking us, asking you and I to, to do what? To walk on the road of Jesus. Because I am the way. I am the way. It means walk on me, walk with me. I will take you to where we're supposed to go. Now, if, if we have that thought, Jesus is not showing us the way. He is the way. He is with you. This means that if Jesus is the way, he will be with you every step of the moment. Every way, every moment, every time he is with you, even in whatever season in life you're going through, he is with you. Now, what kind of road that Jesus is taking us on Matthew 7, 13 and 14, it says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Now, in, in Matthew, in, in this, this chapter, in this verse, say, we find that the, the road is narrow. The road of Jesus is narrow. Only a few finds it. Now, when I think about narrow road, I'm reminded of hiking trails. Any of you are avid hikers here? Do you hike? Have you ever hiked before on hiking trails? Is it narrow or wide? It's narrow. Now, on the narrow hiking trail, are you able to see far ahead? Are you able to see where you're going in the end? You can't. You can probably only see where the corner leads you, where the road leads you. And there's only probably only two or three steps or four steps ahead. Now, what more? Sometimes there are people in front of us in the hiking trail. So what do you, what do you see? You see the back of my head. For the entire, if it's a long trail up to a mountain, it can be, can be five, six hours. You only see the back of the head of the, the person. And... To see a back of the head of a person for two hours going up a narrow road can be quite, quite boring. <laughs> we can lose focus and, and get distracted very, very easily. And the narrow road is not easy. Sometimes it can be lonesome and lon uh, lonely. You are a, a lone traveler. Sometimes there like, let's say, oh, if all of us are on this narrow road, can you imagine all 1,500 of us on a narrow road, single file? That's going to be a long, slow journey. That requires a lot of, of patience, requires the fruit of the Spirit to be exhibited in our lives as we go on this narrow road with, with Jesus. And um, in Proverbs 4, 26 and 27, this is from the message version. This is what uh, King Solomon instructs us to do. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all sideshow distractions. 
watch your step, and the road will stretch out smooth before you. Look neither to the left, the right or the left, and leave evil in the dust. A narrow road, we can be easily distracted because we can't really see far ahead. But we know that the narrow road, Christ is with us at all times. And it tells us not to look to the left and to the right. And evil, leave evil in the, the dust. Don't, don't fiddle around with it. Don't play around with it. Leave it in the dust. Walk forward. Walk ahead. Now, friends, I, I know we, we, we can encounter bumps, difficulties in life, difficulties in life. Just now, I showed you my, the picture of my family, and some of you would know the story of my younger brother, how he has passed away and gone home to be with the Lord. Now, that was a big bump in the life of my family. Uh, my, both my parents went through difficulties in life, having to understand why this happened to the family. Me too as well. And, and I, I questioned the Lord, why does this have, have to happen to me? Why does this have to happen to my family? Why does my brother have to go back to heaven? Uh, why, 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 and why? A lot of questions that are still not answered today. But the, the important thing here, friends, on this narrow road is to keep moving forward. It doesn't have to be big steps, but it can be just small steps with Christ encouraging you along the way. Because the road is narrow, the road is not easy, the road is difficult. And Christ is with you all the way. So you may be at a stop now in your life. Or you are even backtracking and turning back. Or you may go to the left or to the right. But God will say to you in this morning, God, walk with me. Take small steps. Let's move forward together. You're not alone in your situation. So don't slow down, friends. Keep moving forward. And I am the truth. I am the truth. Sorry, in, it's not on the screen, I'm sorry, but in John 1 verse 14, John 1 verse 14a, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. So truth means something that must be true. And, and if things were to come out from my mouth, it would not be absolute truth. It, yeah, it may be true that I am chubby and fat when I was young and Alex was skinny. That's all I can say. But, but absolute truth comes from the words of God and words of Christ. And the words of Christ are found only in the Word of God. But the thing is, the Word of God now has become flesh. It means He is like you and I. The Word of God has become flesh. He is living and dwelling among us. Now, when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, this Word, this living Word, is not only dwelling among you and I, it's dwelling within us within us. So there is a lot of life in us. But yet, but yet, some of us, or most of us, in difficulties, in struggles in life, we don't exude the life of Christ in us. We are caught by the circumstances that we have faced. There is no other book that can give you life. There's no other book that can give you life except the Word of God. And I like um, this, this passage here. There's two disciples, two men actually, after encountering Christ, who, who just rose from the dead, who was walking. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us as while He, meaning Christ, talked with us on the road and open scripture to us. Now, this is what Christ wants to do to you and I. As you read the word, he wants to open scripture, open up himself 
to you so that your hearts will be burning from within. Burning means there's a sense of excitement. There's a sense of, 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 of faith being built within you for you to move on, to carry forward in your darkest seasons in life. Or for you to just to grow as a believer. Christ wants to open His Word within you all the time. Not only on, on Sundays or you come to celebration, but every day as you begin to open the Word on your own, as you begin to encounter His Word, He will make His Word alive to you. At the same time, when the truth of the Word is revealed to us, it gives life but it also exposes untruth. When the truth of the Word is revealed to us, it gives life, and it also exposes untruths in our life. These untruths, these are our sinful ways. It will bring to surface things that are not right before the Lord. Things that we are struggling with, we are grappling with in our life, it can be anything that we go through. I stand here, I am struggling with issues and sins in my life as well. So when I read the Word, the Word of God tells me, hey, Gilbert, this is, a, this is an area that you are struggling with. So surrender yourself. Come to me in repentance. The Word is here to bring light if you are lost at the same time. So on this path you're talking about, as you walk on this path, uh, you may get lost, you may be wandering around, you may have gone to the left or to the right, but the Word of God will be like a lamp, it will shine upon you and your feet, it will direct you back to the path where you're supposed to take. So the Word of God is true, is life. It exposes our wickedness. But at the same time, it brings us back to the road and our journey with the Lord on this narrow path. I am the life. Jesus says, I am the life. He didn't say, I will make your life better. I will enrich your life. He says, I am the life. Now, the life that he talks about here is not about living on this earth. It's about living eternally in the presence of God. Too often times we are, we, we are, we are caught up with how can we live life on earth, knowing that Christ has died on the cross for us so that we can have life and life abundantly, yes, on this earth, but more so, life et eternally in the presence of God. So let's not, let's not get caught up, caught up with, with this life, living a good life here. Yes, the Lord wants to enrich you, the Lord wants to bless you, but let's have a bigger perspective, a heavenly perspective about life, about we are not supposed to live life now only, but to live life uh, in expect in expectant of that, that we can live in God's presence uh, together forever. And let's not also just live for ourselves. Let's share this eternal life to people around us. I, I just love Pastor Daniel and Pastor Chris's heart for the lost. And Pastor Daniel will share, will share with us about his, ex, his exploits uh, with people he met either in the taxi or in the, the, the toilet on the elevator, how he shared Christ with them. And let's seize every opportunity to share the gospel with people. So on, on my way to the airport about three, three weeks ago, on the way to, to Japan, uh, we, I, I went on, on grab car. I sat in front and, and talked to the driver. And the driver began to just ask questions, just chit chat, chit chat. And, um, so I, I learned from Pastor Daniel and Pastor Chris. So I, I want to just uh, have, 
have a, a conversation along the way to KLIA how to share about Jesus to him. So we were chatting and asking him about his family. He says, oh, I've, he just gave me very short, curt answers. So he asked me as well, uh, where am I going? What am I doing in Japan? Uh, you going for a holiday? The normal questions. And then he asked me, uh, what do you do? And then I said, oh, I'm a pastor. Then he said, oh, pastor. He became even more friendly. Hey, pastor. Not, not friend, friendly and yet very like a, he very, his speech changed. <laughs> his demeanor changed. And uh, he, he said, oh, my parents, my family are all Christians. But I, I've now converted to the majority faith. And I said, oh, let's, so I just talked to him along the way. I shared about Christ. He says, yeah, I know about the Bible. I know about God. Uh, but he shared with, to me his struggles as well. And so we had a good time and I, 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 about sharing about God and his faithfulness to, 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 to me and to him. So I asked him, can I pray for you at the end? Can I pray for you at the end? And if you want to, you can repeat with me as well, this prayer as well. So obviously I led him in prayer and I, I, I said, Jesus, you bless him. I asked him, hey, do you want to believe in Christ again? He, he says, uh, he, just smile. <laughs> so what, my story, my point is, seize every opportunity you can to share the gospel. Because life now is just not for us only. Life is eternal. And it, we should spend eternity with all of us in God's presence. Not here, but in eternity. That's, that's what we should look forward to. So, as followers of Christ, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. They come as a package. You cannot just say, I want to live, I want to know the way. The truth is a bit hard. I, I will stay away from the truth, but I want to have a good life. It doesn't work. This tree come as one package. I am, you go on, the, you are followers of Christ on this narrow road. You live out the truth of Christ in your life, and only then you can have life and life abundantly here, but with the expectation that I will be with God forever in, in eternity. But turn to your neighbor and tell them now, are you on this journey with me? Are you on this journey with me? So, so we, we, we've seen Thomas and his doubts, how doubts of Thomas brought about the greatest revelation of Christ to us, that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no one can come to the Father except through me. And now we go to the third point, which is, oops, uh, can someone help me? <laughs> Press the wrong button. Thank you. The revelation. Philip said in uh, John 14 verse 8, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Now this whole journey of I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life is for one sole reason, for Christ to reveal the Father to us. So that we may just not know Christ only, but know the one that is greater than Christ, which is God, the Father. And, many, and the, the word Father is mentioned 24 times in in, in uh, John 14, 24 times, which means the entire chapter of John 14, the, the key theme is about the Father, the fatherhood of God in John 14. And Christ is emphasizing that we can have a relationship with God the Father through Him. So the more we know Christ, the more we walk the road of Christ, the more we read 
the Word of God and the, the Word become life to us, that we have life and life abundantly, the Father is made known to us. The Father is made known to you. Uh, do you all have a, a term of endearment that you call your dad? For me, my dad is here, so I call him Daddy when I was younger. Now, adult, I call him, hey, Dad. <laughs> but it's still a term of endearment because there's affection in the word, hey, Daddy, hey, Dad, to him. Can you just ask your name? What's your, how do you call your dad? Nah? You call him Papa Lo Tao. Papa. So this, 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 this ask your, your neighbor now. How do you, what do you call your dad? My wife calls her father Otto Sang with a lot of affection. Otto Sang. But my, my question to you to ask you this. Are you able to call your God, my God, your God, Daddy God, Papa God, Father God, if you find it a bit strange to call God in such a manner, perhaps we have not really en encountered the Father God and who He is to us. But, but God wants to be His Father to you and I. And the only way we can know that is through Christ, His Son. So the more we know about Christ, the, father, the, the fatherhood nature of God is revealed to us. I, I know that some of us may have uh, absent fathers or, or difficult, difficult um, not bringing without a father in your life. But that doesn't disqualify you from the father's heart of God. Well, you may have difficulty in, in embracing the nature of the father of God, but let, let Christ work within you so that you know and, and can encounter God the Father to you personally. Amen? So when we, have, when, we, when we see God as our Father, we can talk to Him very personally and very, very intimately. Um, Sorry, I went earlier. But what I want to just uh, leave with you is in, in John, going back to John 14, verse 10 and 11, uh, don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? Sorry. It's not there. Sorry. It's, let's look at verse 10 if you have your Bibles. Uh, verse 10. Uh, the fa don't, don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing His work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. So here Christ is again re-emphasizing that believe in me because the Father is in me and the works that I have been doing for you, the Father is actively involved as well. So what Christ has done and is doing in your life, God the Father is also actively involved with Christ in your life. Also. Also. And this, what, this is what Christ further says. Um, in verse 23, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. And we, my Father, and we, me, meaning Christ and the Father, will come to them and make our home with them. Now this is in verse 23. This is very, very profound. I need to stop here and just linger for a while. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. And we, means Christ and the Father God, will come to you and make a home with you. So God the Father, Christ the Son, and later we see the Holy Spirit as well, sent by the Father to live among us, 
is dwelling within us. So the Trinity, God the Father, Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit is living, is making a home within you. This is really, really powerful. When I was reading through this, preparing the sermon, I was like, wow, wow. Narrow road, yes, on my own is challenging and lonely and difficult. But I have God the Father, I have Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit working together to support me in this journey to eternity. So you are not alone. You have the powerful trio, God the Father. Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity working with you. So why do we, why is your heart and why is my heart still troubled, friends? Why are we so troubled? No, in, in closing, the world promises us peace. The world promises rest. But all this, we know that this rest and this peace, they're all temporal. That we've got to work for it, we've got to strive for it. Then when we get it, we get peace for a while. And that it ends again, that we are going to go one cycle again. But in Christ and in the Father's arms, there is rest and peace that you don't have to produce, you don't have to work it, because it's always there, it's come to his arms. I, I like this, uh, this verse here, you see in Psalms 131, verse 1 and 2. This is about David. Now David, at a time, probably didn't have a revelation of God the Father or Christ, but he, he knew how to be a child of God. So if you look and see, my heart is not proud. Lord, my eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But Lord, I have calmed and quieted myself. I have calmed and quieted myself. Lord, I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. The only way that we can be content in as believers, is to know God our Father so that we can be childlike. No not to worry anymore about things around us. Just be His child. Then we can be fully content. You know, when, when stress in work increases, Can we have a calm and a quieted soul? You say in Psalms 1, 3, 1, I have a calm and quieted self. When there is an illness that you are going through, it's like there's no ending to my pain and suffering. Do you have a calm and a quiet soul? When your, perhaps your marriage is in, in the rocks, you've come to to a roadblock, but yet do you have a calm and a quiet soul? When your children of all ages, from young to old, they are rebelling against God, they're concerned for their well-being, do you have a calm and a quiet soul? Friends, Do not let your hearts be troubled because believe in God the Father. When you believe in God the Father, you know who He is through Christ the Son. Can I get the team to come up and just uh, wait? So let's just linger on this thought now. Believe in God the Father through Christ the Son.
the Lord wants to be here to reveal His nature and to reveal the Father to you even this, this morning. And some of us may not know Christ. We've heard about Christ and today you may be here for the first time or you may have heard about Christ before, Jesus Christ before. And now you're hearing that Christ is the way for you. He is the truth for you. And He is life for you. And can I ask you now to invite you to consider following Christ for the rest of your life and believing in Him as your Lord and your Saviour. Is there anyone here who desires to know Christ in a very personal way, an intimate way, even this morning? Everyone's eyes, everyone's eyes remain closed. So we allow the Lord to speak to us so that we can respond to Him. anyone here? Yes, I see a hand. Amen. Shall we all rise and say this prayer after me? pray. Let's repeat after me, okay? Lord Jesus, I thank you for you are God and Lord of us today. I thank you that you are the way, the truth and the life. And Lord, I want to follow on this way with you because your word, your, your, this word is true to me. And I can have life abundantly. So Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. When you come into my heart, I turn away from my sins. Forgive me of my sins. And thank you now for the peace that you've given me. And open my eyes. God the Father, even now. Thank you. I'd like to open this time for, for us to respond to the Lord. Now, perhaps you have doubts in life. As I said, you struggle about following Jesus. You find that this is too tough of a journey. And come up, come up front here. Allow someone to just journey with you and pray with you right now. Maybe you have got difficulties in life. Whatever your needs, please come up to the front. If you desire to encounter God the Father, come to the front and let someone pray with you even this morning. The Lord is here to meet and to encounter us. Amen. Let's just sing the name of Jesus even right now. What a wonderful name it is 
come, the altar is still open. The Lord wants to meet you in your time of need. Come, my child. Come, my son and my daughter. For I like, for I want to make myself known to you this morning, to show you the heart of the Father. Come. You are my precious son, my precious daughter. Come. Yes. Can we all lift our hands? Allow me to pray for you even this morning. Lord Jesus, will you come even this morning and make known the Father to us? The heart of the Father, every one of us here even this morning. That we can continue to grow our faith, profess our love for you, Lord God. Lord, you require for us to obey you, to obey your words, Lord God. May we be steadfast in following after you, obeying you, Lord God. Just as a child who's been wayward, but Lord, we want to come back and obey after you, Lord God, even this morning. So we thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercies towards us. We thank you for you are a good and a faithful God. So Lord, we thank you for your good God. May the peace of the Lord God go before us. May we continue to rest in the knowledge that Christ is our Lord and God our Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit is with us at all times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends.